911, what's the nature of your emergency? Good morning, police, fire, military, and families, and to everybody who is listening in on the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, and today I'm giving away a beef jerky gift box. Good morning, good morning. I wanted to make sure that I remembered to say that because I I always forget. So whoever comments the most within 24 hours, I will go ahead and I will send you that. Today's guest spent 44 years under the the colors in the British Army. He was an infantry soldier, and he specialized in psychological operations completing seven operational tours before turning to the world of welfare. He spent his last eight years as a welfare officer in the Queen's Guards in London. Since retiring, he now has a live stream where he discusses all things mental well-being. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good morning. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Tim Heal. Tim, good morning, and thank you so much for coming on to our show today. Well, thank you, Ashley. Thank you for, for having me on the show. So everybody is listening. Um, We do have this submission form where everybody could kind of tell us what they want some of their questions to be. And the the one here is is definitely burning for me because Tim has written, has his first question, why do you identify as being non-woke? So I have to ask you that first. Well, I come from the the age where woke just wasn't a thing. Um, PC wasn't a thing. And... Yeah, when I'm with that generation that we 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 just get on with life. Um so using pronouns and all that doesn't make a lot of sense to us old types. Yeah, yeah, not not to us either. So I, I appreciate <laughs> um that that shared sentiment for sure. What made you decide to join the British Army? Oh, that's a bit of a story. Um up until the age of ten, I was gonna be a farmer. I was gonna follow it in uh in my uncle's and my granddad's um, line. Um, and at school, we, over here, we, we had something called the 11 plus. Um, so I went and took the, the 11 plus and I failed it miserably. So I couldn't go to grammar school. But uh, we looked at sending me to a, a uh, residential college for farming. Mm. And I failed the exam, exam to get into that as well. So I thought I'd go and join the British Army instead. So Love seeing your uniforms behind you. I know. Don't they look awesome? Good morning. <laughs> so then the the after having that happen to you and then getting in, um, what was that transition like for you? Uh, what, from going from a civilian to being a military? Mm-hmm. Well, over, over here in England, we, we have what we call... Um, army cadets so at the age of sort of 12 and a half you can jo- go and join the army cadets so it gives you an insight into what the military is about um, and then I ended up joining the British Army at 16 as a junior soldier so I kind of got that sort of discipline already instilled but um, they managed to knock it into me quite well mm-hmm. and I spent say 44 years under the colours man boy regular and reserve um, and yeah, I had a really good time. I had some tough times can, as well. <laughs> can you talk to us about, um, the colors in particular, what they are and what your favorite one is? Okay. Uh, the colors are, uh, it's, 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 the colors are given to us by the queen at the time. So you've got the queen's color and you've got the regimental color and they're flags basically. Um, so the Queen's colour uh, has been handed to the regiment by the Queen and it's her colour and that's presented first. And then you get the regimental colour, which contains all the battle honours that the regiments gained over the, the, the centuries. Mm. So going back centuries, we've, we've got so many battle honours um, and, and, and we celebrate uh, some key ones, um, like I think it's today. No, back on the, the 14th of um, January is Sobran Day. We've got Talavera Day, Salamanca Day, which are all battle honours during the Peninsula War. Um, 
there's there, there's several other battle honours that different battalions uh, celebrate mm -hmm. or commemorate. So that's what colours are. They they they're given to us by the Queen, and they hold our uh, regimental history. And you you put on you put on this sheet here to ask which one is your favourite. Oh, the Queen's colour. The yeah. Queen's colour. I mean, same in the US as well. Yeah. So I mean, the regimental colour is really special because that holds our, our battle honours on. Um, but the Queen's colour is special because it's given to us by the Queen. You you served a long time in the military, so I'm wondering when you got back into civilian life, what made you um, what made you make that shift into mental health? Um, <laughs> broken. <laughs> mm. I was broken. Um, I, I spent my last eight years from 2009 till 2018 as a, a welfare officer for London Central Garrison, looking after the Queen's Guards, the guys that do the guards at Buckingham Palace and St James's Palace, Tower London and Windsor Castle. And we also looked after the five foot guards bands. So we had young guys coming out of training and, and doing their ceremonial piece, so learning how to do the ceremonial piece. Uh, we also had the bands that play on, on sort of the parades and everything. And each type comes, so you've got young guys coming out of training and they have their own issues. And then you've got the, the bands people, which are older, mature people generally, uh, and they come with a, another set of problems. So it's it's seeing all these problems that that people have and trying to help them basically. Mm. Um, so ev everybody, if you look at it, any individual, uh, sometimes in their life will have some sort of um, problem with their mental well being. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really admirable to be able to take that experience and then to um, be able to identify that. And just for the sake of, of educating us here in America, I know we have a lot of listeners who are international too, but you you made mention of your your theology and just how you feel about the whole woke, non-woke um, kind of nonsense that's going on. And I'm wondering, for the youth, the people that are growing up where you are, how do you see that it's different compared to all of these kind of interjections of that type of rhetoric being pushed on people? Well, nowadays it, it just seems like people are trying to change history. They're trying to push a, some sort of agenda onto people. And I don't know why, I don't know where it's come from. And it, it's quite worrying. Yeah. Just, just seeing that, for instance, you've got um, trans ide ideology trying to push it onto young kids, trying to convince them that they have been born in the wrong body, uh, and and trying to get young girls, you know, the, the sort of teenage girls, uh, to think it's clever to to go and have the breast cut off to to change to being a boy. That is just wrong. Yeah. Do but a lot of people that you that are around do they share in that same way of thinking as you, or do you see so, it spreading? So, certainly, my generation think that way. I mean, my generation, you didn't have that trans ideology going on. Mm -hmm. It just it's just it's just something that's grown up by the last twenty years or so. Yeah, it's interesting to hear you say that because you're talking about the difference in opinions based on age and generation. And I feel like here in our country, it's all based on a political divide. So if you're on the left, then you think a boy is a girl and vice versa. And if you're on the right, then you don't. So it's very interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm, 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 so, some people call me far right. I'm not. I'm just right. Yes, I agree with that. This is a great <laughs> question. Um, here they're wanting to know, have you seen that same type of woke agenda transpiring among the soldiers that you work with? Um, not soldiers so much, um, but I do know uh, one or two that have had gone through a tra transition. Um, they tended to be RAF types. Mm 
<laughs> so, so then in, in, in terms of down that road in terms of the administration and things like that do you guys have any kind of like the gender inclusion training and equality and all of that oh, being pushed in your military is yeah that something? I mean, it's, it is it is rammed down our throats mm. for my part in it um i had to go and do the um what do they call it it's the um the trans the, the i've forgotten the name of the course now but it's uh equality diversity and inclusion course and and we have to once once we've gone through the course i mean it's, it's a for us it's a two-week course learning how to be woke basically uh, and and trying to and we have to deliver this to the to the troops um we don't need equality and diversity training we already treat people as we want them to uh, how we want to be treated ourselves and i think that's good enough and if you've got common sense you don't need to go through all that rubbish and i think yeah. they make far too much of it nowadays far too many people are trying to push this ide ideology on us and making us far weaker than we need to be it's it's a, it's a funny old thing this this i don't know why minorities feel the the the, the need that the my the majority have to conform to their way of thinking right 100% 100% heterosexual people do not push being heterosexual on anybody the lbgtqxyz people feel the need that they've got to to push their ideology on everybody. Well, no, this is minorities, a minorities want the majority to conform to their way of thinking. There, there was a, a case the other the other day that a guy, a, a teacher, has been suspended from work because he misgendered somebody. Misgendered somebody? Didn't use the right pronoun? Well, why? I mean, that is just mental. That, that, that is a mental disorder. <laughs> 100%. And Tim, it takes people like you having the confidence to be able to speak your, your morals and your truths. I think we, we all need to do more of that. And there's a great question here. Someone's asking, do you think that the U.S. has caused more of that belief to occur in the U.K.? Or do you think that it was a natural occurring as a societal thing? I think it's something that's, that's grown across the West. Western society are, are weakening themselves by this daft following these um, minority groups. You don't see it in the East. Mm. You just don't. I mean, if you, if you go to somebody like Saudi Arabia, if you're caught thieving, they'll cut your left hand off. And there's a reason why they cut your left hand off. is because that's the one you wipe your bum with. You sound just like my dad. <laughs> so, so you have to use your right hand, and that's the one you eat with. I think, um, I think so it's don't the that. U.S. causing this. Yeah, a lot of people think it's the U.S. causing non-woke. I love it. Does the British military have transgenders in their military? Oh, that's a great question. Do you guys have transgenders in your military? We do now. When did that start? It started about ten years or so ago. Hmm. They're about ten, maybe fifteen years ago. Certainly, when I was um, when I was serving in psychological operations, I knew of a a guy that was going through that transition. And it's quite funny because the, the conversation came about because he he was married at the time, lived lived in quarters on 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 the patch, and once he'd make the full change would they have to get divorced because at the time um gays couldn't be married hmm. that's <laughs> single interesting sex, sing, single sex marriage wasn't a thing or, or wasn't allowed at the time you could be be in a partnership but you couldn't get actually married so would they have to get divorced the other funny part about it was when they went out together as a couple 
he looked better than she did. Oh my God. <laughs> Everyone Ooh. conforming and pushing this agenda for less than 1% is such bullshit. 100%. Yeah, it's crazy. So, Absolutely. so thank you for getting political with us because this is our cup of tea. But uh, apart from the whole woke transgender and, and all of that nonsense, what are some of the biggest changes that you've seen over your military career um, in the British Army? Oh, the biggest changes. Um, I don't think, personally, I don't think soldiers nowadays are as robust and as tough as they were in my generation hmm. and previous generations. I'm not Why sure if we... If if we if we had to go to war now, I think we would really struggle. I think we would have a massive ma massive problem. I know that we've got a big problem with recruiting and retren retention in the UK, and I know America's going through the same thing. They're struggling at getting people to to sign up to join the military, and I think that's going to be our downfall. Yeah, someone says here, it sounds like the UK is farther ahead than the US. It's been more recent for us, I believe, the whole don't ask and don't tell sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's we, we've got another big problem here with grooming gangs. Um, they're generally of Pakistani, uh, Muslim backgrounds, and they've been grooming young girls uh, for sex and that's been going on for a long time here and anybody that's stood up to it tried to highlight it has been shut down and i think it's because um they're scared of being called a racist hmm. yeah there's because nothing they're... racist about highlighting somebody that's raping children 100 percent. men have less testosterone nowadays yeah for sure they do yeah it's crazy hearing you talk to him because there's so many things that we're confined here in the United States. So we think that there are internal problems here in the US. We have things like pedophilia, human trafficking, all of those, um, the, the sick things like that, hormones in the food, Matthew, yeah, for sure. And um, <laughs> it's interesting to see that, you know, it, it's such a widespread problem. And I think that more people need to speak up against that. Because as you said, it's not just the Muslims, right? We're not calling them out because they're Muslim. That has nothing to do with no. it. No, it's, 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 I mean, predominantly, they're, their ideology is is 14 years out of date. I mean, they're, they're still living in the Middle Ages. Yeah. They're, if if you, you can see it every day on, on something like YouTube or, or um, Twitter, particularly Twitter, you're seeing their barbaric um, treatment of females. Just take the way they treat their women. Look at how they treat animals. Yeah. I mean, halal. For anybody that doesn't know what halal meat is, what they do is they take the animal, whether it's a, a cow or a, a sheep or a chicken, they hang it upside down and then they slit its throat and let it bleed out. Let it bleed to death. That's halal. That's how you get halal meat. That's barbaric. Somebody's asking here, where did the military get most of its psychological warfare from? Other militaries from other countries? We pretty much developed our own. and we, our, the, the UK psychological operations goes back to um, pretty much the Boer War in the, the late 1800s. Um, and we've, we've had psychological campaigns ever since. We were really good at it during the Second World War. Um, and like all things, I mean, after, after the Second World War, they stood a lot of them down. And we only had a, a shadow unit that looked at psychological warfare. And instead of in carrying on and investing in it, um, we, we let it die until the, I guess, the uh, late 80s when we got into um, fighting the Balkans war when we got back into psychological operations and we formed a, a unit back then um, in, in 19, uh, 1998. We formed 
15 UK Psychological Operations Group. Mm. And that's when I got recruited onto the to the group. And um, and I did seven operational tours in the discipline. I did two tours of Kosovo. I did Macedonia. Uh, and I was in Macedonia when 9-11 happened. Five months later, I found myself in Kabul. Uh, in 2002. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? Tour in 2004. And we did two further tours for Afghanistan. Um, I, I think I still hold the record for the most uh, experienced PSYOPs operator in the British forces. I don't think anybody's done as many operational tours as me in their discipline. That's very, very impressive and very impressive. Has there been protests in the UK against Israel and the pro-Hamas like there has been in the United States? And if so, is there anyone giving them any kind of pushback? Um, right. There's, 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 <laughs> since since the 7th of October, we've had the, the pro-Palestinian lot protesting every single week in London on a Saturday and Sunday the uh, the other lot the the pro um, Jewish lot come out on a Sunday so yeah we're seeing it every week and it's spreading all across the country um, I don't know what it is with the police in this country they give them a free reign to to spew their hate and their vile messages. Um, but if anybody stands up against it, then they're the ones that's in trouble. I'll tell you how crazy this country is. There were some guys off to a football match. They've got the, the cross of St. George. You've seen the, the English flag, the red cross mm -hmm. on a white background. They've been told to put that away because it might offend somebody. Oh, my gosh. We're not even allowed to, to fly the Union flag, uh, yet they can walk down the street with Palestinian flags. But the Union flag, because somebody might be offended, we have to put it away. Then I have words to say about that. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're quite profane. Yeah, we, <laughs> so we share that I, same sentiment. I, I fly a Union flag outside my house, and anybody who tells me to take it down, they will get short shift. <laughs> yep, same here, same here. We have um, some some comments and questions here. I want to make sure we get to you because I know we're wrapping this up soon. So back in the 80s when I served, there wasn't any female, females on aircraft carriers. Nowadays, there's a lot. I love the way that the queen is represented and treated much better than the U.S. treats its so-called leaders. Um, when I spent my time on the ship, there were no females, nor, nor they're putting them on subs. But the base about... <clears throat> of our military off the other countries, take the SEALs, they modeled off the British, the British SAS. Yeah. Um, I, I think the only place we don't have females in the British forces at the moment is on submarines and the submarine service. Hmm. That's the only place that females can't go. We've had females try out for paras, infantry. We've got quite a lot of females in the infantry. Some of them are a lot better than the soldiers. So <laughs> if she if she transitions and she calls herself a male, then she can get on that submarine. Uh, quite probably. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. I I want to make sure that we get to your your live stream. Can you tell us about that and then how people can can contact you? Yeah, I do uh, a live every Thursday. Uh, it's, it goes out at seven o'clock, um, Greenwich Mean Time, in the evening. And it's called Everyday Conversations Regarding Mental Health. Where can we stream that? And that's on YouTube. Um, it's also on Facebook. But, um, yeah, main, mainly on um, YouTube. Perfect. So Everyday Conversations Regarding Mental Health. Goes out on a Thursday. And, um, yeah, it's there, it's there to, to go back and watch all the, the previous episodes. Yeah, and I'll make sure that I'll link that down below too. Dan, we have female army rangers now. Thank you for your yep. service, sir. Yes, Tim, thank you so much for your service, for joining us, for enlightening us, and um, for answering all of our, our selfish questions. And if you guys have any more of them, please reach out to Tim directly. 
Yeah, please do. Um, <laughs> I have an Thanks. alter ego um, called Horace Podmore, political commentator. Um, he's definitely anti-woke, and I expect in the not-too-distant future that YouTube won't like what he's saying and he'll be taken down. But uh, for the time being, he pops up every day. Okay, yeah, I need to go check him out then. And I'm worried about just putting this interview up on my my show, but I'm going to because that's the kind of thing that we need to we need to do our own pushback, right? We 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 have to. We 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 cannot let the 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 minority push around the majority. I agree with that. Tim, thank you so much for your time. Everybody have an amazing day and if you have any more questions, thank you, Tim. Thanks, Ashley.